Hi, I'm Jeremy Scott and welcome to the Jeremy Scott Spiritual Podcast. The podcast that takes a no-frills approach to all things spiritual. If love is the answer, then what's the question? You can uh, answer that (laughs) in various ways. You know, let's have a look at what love is, first of all. There are many variations of love, both positive and negative, and in between. So if love is the answer, it would depend on a certain variation of love. In the tarot, you've got uh, four pentacles which in mainly the the rider weight version depicts someone holding on to their money so there you have a depiction of the love of money or the love of material things and many use that as a form of identity their form of identity, their identity is dependent on how much money they've got, how much is in their bank accounts, what kind of trappings of wealth they have. That's how they identify themselves as. Or by a status symbol. You know, they, you could have a love of your work, love of what you do, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, however, so many do identify themselves as being a chairman of this, or a boss of that, or a manager, or a doctor, or chief surgeon, and they'll put letters after their name to show what they've achieved in qualifications. And, you know, you you can't blame people for that. You can't fault people for that. A lot of companies depend on those kind of things on on resumes or curriculum vitae, CVs, to be able to choose who the best person is for the role that they're offering. It doesn't always work out that way because just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean that the person themselves are actually good for the role that's being offered. You know, and that's the way it works. We identify ourselves by so many things related to our status, to what we have materially, to what we have financially and so on, you know, even on a spiritual level we identify ourselves as being a master of this grandmaster of that spiritual teacher you know certified or accredited healer of some description these are all taglines labels that we put on ourselves to promote ourselves to identify ourselves and even on a spiritual level we still believe that that is us if I was to say to you you know who are you you may give me a list of qualifications or achievements to identify yourself with You may identify yourself by looking in the mirror and say, that's me. But is it? (laughs) The real answer is no, that's not you at all. You're none of these things. You are so, so much more than that. I'll get onto that a little bit more shortly. Other variations of love. You've got 
because obviously love in itself is an emotion so you have those who are very social very affectionate towards others open warm friendly and that's also a kind of love you know they love people they love animals they love being around others they love to heal or help others to feel happy there's certainly nothing wrong with that that's a great way to be to feel happy to feel included we have animals that show love our pets show love to us in certain ways dogs are well known for that aren't they you know no matter what they stay with you they don't care how many spots you've got on your face you know they don't care male female what gender you are they don't care about your status they don't care what you identify as as long as you're giving them the fuss attention and food and companionship that which they require as long as you're giving them that need of belonging which they would have say in a pack if they were running wild like the wolves they will love you in return even cats <laughs> even cats do the same even though they can be quite contrary at times but they do the same you know so love comes in many many forms you can have also a love that's negative as I've mentioned before you know about greed and so on you know love of money love of power love of doing things to annoy people or even to deliberately hurt them people do love things like that and it's an unfortunate path that they've gone down but you know they deliberately want to hurt to torture to maim even to kill and they love that they get a thrill out of that is that the path that they came here to experience maybe or maybe they've wandered off it a little bit through their choices we shouldn't judge them in that way now it's uh, if as may be the case they've come to experience a life like that some would say in your in some religion that that is karmic they're getting their own back on those who have hurt them in the past or have been nasty to them in the past as in a past life I'm not so sure I fully agree with that but then again you know we don't have actual proof so I'm still open-minded to that however the sense I get from from my conversations with my inner team and and other things that I've researched as well I get the sense that when we come here because we have free will we may come here to follow a certain path which may lead to certain types of power but then we go awry so our choices are a little bit off track and we don't always stick to the outline if you like that we came here to experience we start ad-libbing is one way of putting it and many of us ad-lib a lot if you're feeling that you're not on your true spiritual path the chances are that you are ad-libbing in some way shape or form and that is down to your choices and certainly I've been there several times in my lifetime in this particular life experience where I know that I've made wrong choices but one way to look at it is you thought it was a great idea at the time and it doesn't condone anything that's what well what we would consider to be hurtful evil totally disgusting or anything like that it doesn't condone those actions because as they say in physics every action has a consequence 
So those ones who act in such a way will eventually have to face the consequences of that, whether that's in this life or a future life experience. And that's where the karmic side of things may well come in and could well be true in that sense, you know. But whether we, we uh, go into a future life experience to get our own back, so to speak, I'm not so sure about that part of it, but certainly I could understand it if we, in a, a future life experience, were perhaps put under certain consequences or certain ways of living, which would be detrimental to us, as in, you know, it could be in a state of poverty or a state of illness or, you know, maybe even going to prison because we've committed a crime and so on, things like that, that could be a karmic situation where we're being, not so much being punished, I wouldn't go as far as to say as being punished in that way, but we're being, in a sense, forced, but being made aware of the consequences um, of our actions from a previous time. Now, obviously, we don't remember what those situations were, say, in a past life. We don't remember those once we're enjoying this particular life experience. However, when we return to have what's known as a life review or we return to reflect you know, on what we've done in the current life experience, you know, we can see where we've made improvement, we can see where we've still to make improvement and all kinds of things like that. And as I like to say, guys, you know, I have no absolute proof of any of this. I'm only going by the conversations that I've had with my guides, with my inner team, and from deep meditation. Or as deep as I can go, anyway. I'm no, I'm no Zen Buddhist, that's for sure. You know, I still get distracted quite often. <laughs> But, but all those situations also come from a place of love. And you could say, well, you know, how does that work out? I mean, if someone's gone around committing crime or hurting people, whatever, how is that coming from a place of love? It's not so much what they're doing that comes from a place of love. It's how we react to it. How are we reacting to what they're doing? Are we reacting in a way which would be considered loving? Are we reacting in a way which would be considered hateful? Or indeed harmful in a physical way, in an abusive way? Are we counteracting what they did through our own actions, our own reactions. When I was with uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, as I've mentioned before, I spent 14 years with them, studying Bible and all the other things, preaching and all sorts, giving talks, preaching from the pulpit, if you like, for, from the platform. So I went deeply into these kinds of things. And their reaction to anyone who's committed something that's wrong or considered to be wrong, an act of wrongdoing, if you like, is to approach it from a place of love. I'll give them that. That's something they do do. And they sometimes get a lot of stick for that because there are ones who have committed certain acts which many feel, oh, they've been sheltered. But if those guys have truly repented, as in their eyes, if they have truly repented, yeah, and do not commit any further actions or anything like that along those lines and, and so on, then they're considered to be back on track. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that's neither here nor there. That's how they work. And obviously they do where people have really overstepped 
the boundary, they do report them to the authorities. You know, and there are many, many cases where situations are involved where a brother or sister gets arrested because they have committed something. You know, um, without being reported because it was unknown to their congregation or whatever they'll be doing it in secret but they still get visited by those who, who are in charge of their congregation the elders and if they don't repent by the way if they don't repent now if, if they're not truly 100% sorry you know and recognize the pain and suffering that they've caused if they reject that, then they themselves are rejected. They're what's known as disfellowshipped. And that's the same as what the Roman Catholic Church would say is excommunicated. So they're no longer, they're forced out basically of the organization. And that's how they, they teach. I only brought that up because I mean, I feel it's relevant on how they approach wrongdoers if you like how they approach wrongdoing they come from a place of love now that love for them is based on obviously the teachings of Jesus and they term that as unconditional love it's a love without judgment the same love your pet gives you doesn't judge you in any way shape or form and will always be ready to forgive you should you be angry with it or should you lash out at it because you're angry you know it'll always forgive you after that it won't shy away from you unless you've been really really horrible to it you know your dog if you smack it or something like that it'll always come back for a cuddle won't it after an hour or two <laughs> Uh, you know, that is how to approach matters, I feel, is to come from a place of unconditional love. They say that the whole universe has been created through love or by love. Unconditional love, non-judgmental love. And I can see that or oh, the way that works, you know? I mean, you see, walk out to nature as I am right now, out on a really lovely, gorgeous day, springtime. You know, and I'm really having a nice walk round and having a chat with you guys. And, uh, I'm enjoying the, the, it's a really, you know, it's a cloudless sky. It's still a bit cool, but it's lovely, the sun's out. And when you're walking in places like this, you can feel that love the unconditional love of the whole universe and if you like the creator the source of all things going back to the Bible because you know I like to refer to the Bible it was Jesus himself said that the the Sun and the rain you now it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous the Sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous nature treats us unconditionally non-judgmentally I wouldn't go as far as to say it teaches us or treats us with love <laughs> at times <laughs> oh no sorry but you know there are times when you could really really doubt that but there are always lessons to be learned aren't they and that's how we can approach things as well by treating others in that non-judgmental way and learn the lesson that we're being taught from whatever has happened and we know there's a lot of tragedies there's a lot of horrible things going on in the world right now a lot of tensions rising and all kinds of things like that horrible things that go on from mass shootings to children being shot and, you know, and all kinds of things like that look beyond that and see where we can learn the lessons what comes out of it and I would say that 99.9999% of the time, something positive comes out of it. A change in legislation, you know, all those who are perpetrators get caught and, 
you know, who are and, and then are uh, punished, if you like, in, in this 3D reality for that. You know, or there's a, a change made in some way, that the charities are formed or there's organisations formed to reduce that kind of violence and all these kinds of things. So something good comes out of it. Awareness is raised, such as a couple of years ago, or a few years ago with, with the, the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter movement and other movements since have raised awareness about certain ways that we've been living which need to be addressed if we are to show each other the love that we should have for each other no matter what. So unconditional love is the way forward for us all and if we come from a place of love, we are using the strongest ever, the strongest of all the emotions to come from. Another part of the Bible is the Apostle Paul. He talks about the fruits of the Spirit, the fruitage of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, goodness, kindness, faith, mildness, and self-control. And he says... The strongest of these, the most powerful of these, in so many words, is love. Love binds everything together. How we react to things, if it's not from a place of love, only makes it even more potentially dangerous. If we react to things in a negative way, we create more negativity. We add to it instead of taking it away. So when we're watching news programs or reading things in the newspapers or online, you know, the media or whatever, if we are reacting angrily to these things, we're doing what they want to do, and that's to create an even more negative atmosphere adding to that negative energy and what happens you put all the focus on it and more of the same pops up we know that in our own lives we get a new car as an example and we've never ever seen one of these cars before we see it in a showroom we fall in love with it we buy it then within a couple of minutes of driving down the street you see more of them you know become more aware that there is more than one of this particular make, model and colour of this particular car or whatever. That's the energy that we use to manifest. So we've manifested those others into our reality. The same goes when you're focusing on negative news and so on. We manifest more of that into our lives. We see more and more stories of the same and that fuels our anger. That really gets us up and riled and going and we ourselves then may commit actions which may be questioned by the police <laughs> or other authorities as a result because we get so angry. Whereas if we come from a place of love, we step back, we're more objective. We recognise, we're aware of what's going on, but we send those situations love. I like to sit there, if I'm watching the news, I'll sit there and send it, whatever situation it is, I'll send it love, strength, blessings and healing. And people say, oh, don't watch the news. No, nah, that's your choice. I stopped watching the news for many years. Still found out what was going on from people's conversations and so on. But it's not the watching of the news that counts. It's how you react to it. It's your reaction to the news or other negative situations. It doesn't have to be news. It can be other negative situations. But if you're sending out love to those situations, if somebody's shouting at you and you're a boss or something like that, you're accusing you of this, that or the other, Instead of reacting in an angry way, getting all heads up, as I've certainly done in the past, 
send them love just nod send them love and healing they'll soon calm down try it they'll soon calm down when they see they're having no effect they may even apologize for their behavior I've certainly experienced that when you don't react to their reaction they take a step back they notice oh wait a minute I'm out of order here and they apologize try it out guys work for me I'm pretty sure it'll work for you so if love is the answer what is the question the question is what is love so what is love love is the answer <laughs> <sighs> always comes back to love guys always and I'm sending you love strength and healing right now love strength and healing in whatever circumstance you happen to find yourself in right now I thank you for listening guys until next time namaste